it used to be that America was a country of free thinkers, and it used to be, this is another expression that you don't hear so much anymore, say what you think and think what you say. But no, this is much more like the world of 1984 where everything is double think, and you think twice before you say something in public. You think three times before you say something when you're standing in an airport line, I promise you. <laughs> and this is why I've said that Americans have become, this isn't the land of the free and the home of the brave, that's all bullshit. This is the land of whip dogs, uh, whimpering dogs. Now, why are Americans this way? I've thought about what's the reason for this. First thing is, I'd say, well, yes, it's an absence of virtue. But we got to look at the word virtue. Uh, and I, I, I want to talk about the definitions of, of words uh, a little bit more. Virtue, you know where that comes from? It comes from the Latin, virus, which means manly. It used to be virtues were things like fortitude and courage. That's from the root of the word. But people think of virtues today, things are so degraded, what do they think of? They think of faith, hope, charity as virtues. These aren't virtues, they're actually vices. But that's a different speech that I'd love to give <laughs> later, and not now. Uh, so how about, okay, so we have an absence of virtues, and we have a presence of vices. Besides, I mean, insinuated throughout the society are things like greed, and especially envy, which is going to become a big vice in the years to come. So that's the reason why America's gone downhill. Um, another reason is bad philosophy. What's the reigning philosophy in this country now? I promise you, it's not what it used to be. It's statism and collectivism. Those are the reigning philosophical things. So it's bad philosophy. It's not even that. It's no philosophy. Most of these people don't even think about this. They don't have a philosophy. They don't have a view on life, actually. So this is why the country is, has gone downhill. So, so much of, of the people that run this country are either knaves or fools. I, I mean that literally. You've got a, which are they? Is it, are we dealing with a knave or a fool? In other words, are you dealing with somebody who's evil or somebody that's stupid? You have to ask yourself that. Are you dealing with a Dick Cheney, or are you dealing with a George Bush? Kind of <laughs> take your choice. Actually, at this point, I see the US as being circled by two moons, evil and stupidity. One's evil and one's stupid. Those are the names of the moons. And it's a much like the, the planet Mars, which is circled by two moons, Phobos and Deimos, fear and terror. Okay, I'm of the opinion that most people are basically decent. The 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of people are okay, basically. But now, what about that 20%? Well, let's call them potential trouble sources, because they can go either way. But we can take 20% of that 20%, okay? And these people are the sociopaths, okay? And when they get in power, usually they're hiding under rocks. In normal times, when everything's going along, yeah, people don't want to hear from them, and they'll deliver the mail, or they'll sell your shoes, or something like that. But when circumstances in society reach a certain point, they start evidencing themselves. And that other rest of the 20% start swinging along with them. And that's the place where we are right now. Pareto's law is an operation. And let me point out also that uh, uh, a lot of people believe in American exceptionalism, OK? And I think a good argument can be made for America having been exceptional in the past. I think, uh, you know, I think this was factually correct. It was different. It was special. But I don't think it's true anymore. Uh, you've got to look at all the other countries in the world where, and all of them think that they're special or better and different. But look at what happened in Russia over a long period of time. It was a phenomenal disaster. I mean, it was nightmarish. Look what happened in Germany. 
during the 30s and 40s. Look what happened in China under Mao for 30 years. And this is, this is institutionalized industrial scale, mass murder, okay? And lots of other countries that happened in Cambodia, it happened in Rwanda, it happened in the Congo recently, and I can give you dozens of other countries where this has happened. Now, if America has ceased to exist and it's just another nation state called the United States at this point, are we gonna be different than those other people? Well, I don't see any reason why that would be the case. So, why is this if 80% of Americans are basically decent, good intention, goodwill people, what is going wrong and why? Well, I'll give you three reasons that I've thought of. Number one, they don't have any philosophical anchor, okay? They don't have any philosophical anchor. In other words, their idea of, I'd say a little like the Tea Party movement, they, they don't really think these things out. They think, well, we'd like it to be like it was well, and leave it to beaver days where, you know, everything was, was kind of nice and all that. They have some kind of nebulous idea, but, but they never really get into thinking about what the philosophy that underlied things in different eras was like versus the philosophy today. And what is the reigning philosophy today, incidentally? It's statism and collectivism everywhere. Second thing is uh, fear is a reigning emotion in this country. I, I talked about this a little bit in that conversation the other day, but I'll just rehash it briefly. Uh, the lower classes, if we want to make a broad division between lower classes, basically what characterizes them are the emotions of desperation and apathy. Well, no wonder they're cemented to the bottom of society, and they're just not a factor. It's a rare person that rises from the real lower classes. Uh, how about the upper classes? Well, you know, they're in things like uh, uh, greed and arrogance and thinking they're superior because they've got more money. But America's basically a middle class country, it's becoming less and less that way, but it's still a middle class country. So what is the dominant emotion of the middle class? It's fear. It's fear of those Mexicans coming in. It's fear of the Muslims. It's fear of losing everything they have. It's fear they can't afford to send their kids to college, which is a mistake anyway, incidentally. It's uh, uh, fear that they'll lose their house. The whole country is driven by fear. That is the reigning emotion of the middle class today. And that's not a good thing. Oh, Deimos and Phobos, yeah, those two moons circling Mars, like the two different ones we have circling the US. And the last thing, and the, I think the most critical reason, uh, no philosophical an anchor, an atmosphere of fear, which is going to become much more evident as the Greater Depression gets deeper. But the last one is a reflexive belief in government. People really think more than ever. It used to be, the United States used to be more like Switzerland. In Switzerland, you ask people, who's the president of Switzerland? It's a rare Swiss citizen that can tell you who the president of Switzerland is. It's academic, nobody cares. He doesn't do anything, okay? Politics is not a big part of their lives, except for local things uh, that are fairly meaningless. But in this country now, the government has put itself in a position where people view it as a cornucopia and people look to the government to solve all their problems. And this is a real problem. Government is a growth industry. I, I don't have to emphasize that anymore. You all know that. It's, it's growing like topsy. Uh, and it's drawing exactly the worst type of people. That's where all the sociopaths go. Washington draws Sociopaths, like a pile of dog crap, draws flies. It, it, it's perfectly predictable, okay? And that's what's going on. And why is that? Well, Mao said it best. The power of the state comes out of the barrel of a gun. And what's a gun? It controls other people. And that's what the sociopaths like, so that's why they go to Washington. So what I'm telling you is, the quality of people that you're gonna find in the government in the future is gonna be much worse than it's been in the past. I think it's perfectly predictable. So I, I will leave you with this thought, that uh, uh, the US has 
actually degraded into something resembling an empire, not in the traditional form. Uh, it's not, well, it's got plenty of military ambitions, spending more than all the other countries in the world, and that's going to bankrupt it. And everything the military buys is junk. I mean, they're, they're literally, once again, and predictably, fighting the last war. Cavalry charges before World War I, battleships in World War II, they're doing the same thing with all these obscenely expensive and completely useless weapons for the type of wars that are going to be fought in the future. Um, but it's like the Roman Empire. After Augustus, which was one thing, there came Tiberius. And the Romans were so happy when Tiberius kicked the bucket. God, could it get any worse than that? Well, then they got Claudius, who was kind of like the George Bush of his day. And they said, well, OK, we've, we've had evil and stupid. Now we'll go back to normal again. No. Then they got Caligula. Uh, could it get any worse than Caligula? Well, then they got Nero. But do you remember what happened after Nero? After he uh, was, a, well, after he, after he was killed, well, he really committed suicide. But then it came the year of three emperors, okay? It was the first civil war of the, of, of the Roman Empire days. So anyway, uh, we can talk about a whole bunch of other things, but I just wanted to say from a, uh, from a philosophical point of view, and this is touching a little bit into what Neil Howe is gonna talk to you about, which I think you'll find very interesting, incidentally. But I think that there's very little cause for near-term optimism. Uh, look, there's lots of room for good news out there. I mean, what is it that makes things better in the world? Well, there are two things. One is technology, and the good news is that there, is there are more scientists and engineers alive today than have lived in all of Earth's history previously combined. And they're gonna continue doing things. So, Technology is going to get better, and that's really what improves your standard of living. That's number one. And the second thing is individuals will continue to, well, not Americans at this point, but certainly smart Americans and people in other places of the world, will continue to produce more than they consume. The difference is savings. That's wealth. That's capital. And that'll continue. Okay, so this, it's good news, bad news. It's not all doom and gloom. And... You know, if you recognize this, it's, it's, um, it's going to help you to, uh, I mean, look, the Greater Depression, most, not all, but most of the real wealth in the world will still exist. It's just going to change ownership, okay? So hopefully you guys will be in a position where you can get more and those other chimpanzees around the watering hole will get less. <laughs>